Today, we're going to talk about exceeding customers' expectation because what we see is that it's the only way really today to smash your target and to make sure that uh, you're winning all your deals, basically. So first of all, let's talk about why it's very important to look at your customer's expectation. Well, one thing that we will notice is that customers' expectations are higher than they've ever been. I'm not the one saying it. Actually, the state of the connected customer, which is a um, research that has been done by Salesforce last year, is telling us that. So let's look at a few stats. 66% of customers expect companies to understand their needs and expectation. Listen, I've been married um, for a few years now, and I you know, just about understand the needs and expectation of my husband, and I guarantee he does not get mine whatsoever. So how are we supposed, as salespeople, to understand needs and expectations completely and fully of our prospect, of our buyers, in the little amount of time that we're given. Yet, it's expected of us. 84% of business buyers are more likely to buy from sales rep that understand their goals. So not only we need to understand their needs, their expectation, we also have to understand their goals. Yet it seems that almost 60% of us apparently lack adequate knowledge of our buyer's business. So on top of this, we need to be experts in what they're doing. And I don't know you, but although I do spend some time with my, my prospects and my customer, I don't really have all the time necessary for me to be able to have this full understanding and deliver the sales expectation, the sales experience that they want. So they're raising the bar for sales standards, sales, says Salesforce to us. Like, yeah, 100%. They want the same experience that when they're buying for themselves. And they put a little bit of pressure on us as well. They're like, you know what, guys? It's easier than ever to take my business elsewhere. So if you're not delivering the sales experience that I'm expecting, I'll just go and see your competitor. I'm sure a lot of us, uh, a lot of us on this call are selling SaaS products very competitive markets. So we have to be really good. But there's one thing which is very important. And this is something that we've already spoken about today, is that they seek salespeople who act as trusted advisor. And this is what we're going to look at today. How do you become the ultimate trusted advisor to the point that you really have no issue in closing a maximum of deals and making sure that you get all the info information that you need from your prospect. So I'll give you three key areas that you can work on in order for you to become that ultimate trusted advisor for all of your prospects. Obviously, you're going to seek to understand their goals, their needs, their expectations, but because you can't dig you know, enough sometimes in their needs, goals, and expectation, you need to build something that's going to help you in all of your deals. First thing, expand your knowledge. Become that Mr. or Miss Know-It-All. If you're selling a product, understand the technical ecosystem. If you're selling services, understand exactly how it impacts people and processes. So the technical ecosystem might be, what other products are we going to plug in? How is this going to impact them? What are technical options? And try and have, if you can, engineering thoughts. Hey, this is the workflow we can have. These are the options that you can do. This is how different customers have actually plugged these things together. And don't only think about your own product, but all of the products that might be in this tech stack. The people and processes will be impacted. Who exactly will be impacted? You're selling to sales. Very likely the marketing will be impacted at this point as well. Um, if you're selling to HR, there's certainly pretty much everyone in the company that's going to be impacted. If you try and understand how everyone will be impacted by the choice that the people that you're talking to um, are going to make, it's going to help you help them navigate internal conversations. 
Finally, industry knowledge, super important. If you're selling in specific verticals, try and understand what the competition looks like. What's the innovation? What's the biggest threat? What's the biggest um, opportunity within this industry? Because that is something that you can easily speak to um, when you're talking to any of your um, of your prospects. One of the key things is to challenge them, right? So we talked about consultative selling, and this is pretty much what we're doing. And one of the key ways to consult really is to audit and then tell them what to do, challenge them. So think about their goals, the process and their results. And certainly, you know, you're an expert in what you're doing and the value that you're bringing. So you should be able to say when something is not good, Obviously, you want to be tactful. So one of the ways that you can do that is use questions. Oh, okay. How did you come up to um, this number as a goal for you? And why was this process uh, put in place? And why is the result that you're expecting? Do you think that this is, how does this compare to a benchmark within your industry? Then use customer stories. Tell them how other people are doing things. Tell them how... You know, people are seeking for better or using different processes that are making them much more efficient. I don't know if some of you have read The Challenger Cell, but um, it's it's a sales methodolo methodology that is uh, teaching you about how you can become that challenger sales and really smash your target. Um, teach, tailor and tech control is the three T's that are coming through um, the book. It really to, it really is here to help you understand what you need to do in order to be that challenger sales. So teach your prospect, tell all your pitch to them and take control of that conversation. And really, it's just what's left for you is to smash it because 40% of high sales performers primarily use that challenger style and high performers were more than uh, twice likely to use that challenger approach. People just want to be told what to do. Finally, one thing which is really important to kind of get all of this and tighten it, all, tighten it all up together is to build your network. The more people you know, the better it is. Identify the key players within your market, the influencers, the key logos, the, plow, the power users of your product, and nurture these relationships. Try and understand what they need, what are they really, really good at, what are they expert of, what are the questions that they tend to ask or the ones that they tend to answer. Add them to nurturing cadences if you do have a cadencing tool. Create these engagement processes that will make sure that you stay close, you stay tight with these customers, with this prospect, with these people within your network that you can use. Because one thing which is amazing is when you introduce your prospect to current users or you introduce your prospect to another prospect which is going through the same internal transformation or a question about the way that they're changing the process, this is where the power of you just becomes really real. Because remember, you know a lot and you've been able to consult uh, because of your knowledge. You've challenged them in the current state and the objectives and the process that they have. And now what you're doing is that not only you have become a trusted advisor, you're also saying like, hey, you know what? Don't take it from me. I actually know loads of people that are going through the same thing than you are. Let me connect you. So as a quick recap, if you want to exceed your customers' expectations, which are incredibly high, know it all, challenge them, use your network, and become the ultimate trusted advisor.